All right, party people. So in today's video, guys, I wanted to unbox probably what I'm gonna consider to be the most important handgun of 2021. Now notice I didn't say the best handgun. I said the most important handgun. And we're gonna talk about why. And I'm not gonna like hold the suspense up. This is the A-Rex Delta M Gen 2. There's a lot about this gun that I think is gonna really change the way that guns are made moving forward. But before I get into that, I kinda wanna give you guys just a heads up. I'm, I'm gonna change up the structure in the way that I do handgun reviews or any type of review for a full firearm. We're gonna basically do two to three videos for each gun. First video is gonna be like an unboxing and first impressions without live fire. You know, so today we're gonna go over all the cool little features, what comes in the box. I wanna talk about the holsters and stuff that maybe would work with this and just you know go through that. And then I wanna have all that documented. So then when I actually do the range review and get you know five, 600, maybe a thousand rounds through it, I wanna see if my first impressions change based on that. And then we can, when we do the review, I can actually be like, okay, cool. Because sometimes, I know this has happened to me a few times with handguns. You go into a gun store, you pick up a handgun, you dry fire it, you hold it out and you're presenting it. And you're like, wow, it feels really good. Then you get to the range and realize you're not that good with the gun. Like for example, with this one, this is the HK VP9. I've always thought that this gun feels amazing. But when I shoot it, it is a very snappy handgun. Even before I had the slide milled and the red dot added, it's a very snappy gun. And it kind of messes with your head a little bit because it's nine millimeter, it shouldn't be snappy. And so that's why I wanna do the videos like that. To understand why I think that this is gonna be the most important handgun of 2021, in regards to modular optics handguns, has a lot, if not more features than like the Glock MOS, the MMP 2.0 core, and it comes in at like $200 less if not more. So think about that for a second. All right, so here's the box that it comes in. It's your basic gun case, as you can see. And the only difference is it says A-Rex along the front. And over here, you have these slide latches that open it up and then it reveals the handgun and all the little accessories. Right here, it has a quick start guide. It shows you how to you know, work the handgun completely. It shows you how to clear it and some safety rules, which I've gone over in other videos. Just a heads up for those of you guys who are new to this channel. I know that the subscribers already know this. If you see anything in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a bunch of different things. I'm gonna be talking about sights. I'm gonna talk about red dots and even this guy, uh, which can be had for really dirt cheap. And we'll talk about the price here in a minute. If you follow the first link in the video description, I will also pin that link in the comment section below. That will redirect you to another page. And all of those links will be in that video description. Just wanted to give you a heads up that's there if you need it. But but once we go over the pricing of this guy, you're gonna be really happy that I have the, you know, the links and stuff over at the blog post or at my Full30 site. Enough of that. Let's get into what comes in the box. Get your handgun. It already has a, an extended mag in it. You get a backup mag. The backup mags that are flush are uh, 15 plus one. Up here, you get back straps. And then behind the back straps, you have all your operating instructions you also have your plates that come with your modular optics. And then you also have a lock that's right here. And we'll pull that stuff out just so we can look at it. And so this is the A-Rex Delta M Gen 2. The Gen 1 looks a little bit different. It doesn't have as good of texture on it. Um, I remember seeing those and I just was not interested in even reviewing one. However, this one is an exception. You can get these in three different colors. You can get them in gray, like you see here. You can get them in black, or you can get them in flat, dark earth. And there are three models available. There is the M version, which is the one that we have. It, that one is most similar to the sizing of a Glock 19. Then they have the X version, which is their version of the Glock 19X. Um, so it has a longer grip, same size slide. And then they have the L version, which is like their Glock 17. Then within those lines, you can choose to get modular optics or no modular optics. And we're gonna cover modular optics and stuff here more in a second. Looking at it right now, we have, for the sights, you get a white front dot and you get serrated blacked out rears. 
um, they are not suppressor height. So that's something to note because a lot of modular optics handguns, as the only exception up until now was Glock. Everything else came with suppressor height sights. So Glock and A-Rex don't. Um, right here, you can see your modular optics plate. And then right here, you have a loaded chamber indicator um, that pops up when there is a round in the chamber. Let me find a dummy round to show you. So I'll put a couple of dummy rounds here in the mag. And so you can actually see how that protrudes up just slightly uh, right there. And then you can also feel it with your fingers in case it was dark, you can totally see it. I forget what the technical term for this is, but there's a red dot there to show you when the pistol is cocked. The cool thing is this has a very similar trigger to a Glock. So for example, if the trigger is forward, you know it's in the cocked position. If it's backwards, you know it's not, but you have that striker assembly there that turns red and then when you fire it, it disappears. There's one way to see if there's a round in the chamber and there's a, two ways to see if the firearm is actually cocked and ready to fire. It has a two plus extension so you can hold with this, with this setup here, you can have 17 plus one, so a total of 18 rounds um, in your handgun. And then for this one here, here, it's the same as everything else that is this size, is 15 plus one, so you can have a total of 16 rounds ready to go. And so together, if you were to carry this, and we'll talk about holster rigs and stuff in a minute, um, stuff that possibly fits this, but you could have 16 in here, 17 in here, so you could have a total of about 33 rounds on you at all times um, and conceal it really easily in shorts and a t-shirt given that you have the right body type. But like I said, we'll talk about that when we talk about holsters. Um, the weight without a magazine is 18 ounces. So without the magazine, this thing weighs one pound, two ounces. A weight with the magazine comes out to 20.6 ounces and that's unloaded. I haven't loaded it up because all ammo, obviously, depending on what grain you get, is gonna determine what the weight is with a loaded mag. Now, something else I've noticed here is you get some really, really good back straps. What I like about these back straps is on the gun right now, you have the medium size back straps and these back straps are all notated right here. So this one's the large one, and then this one's the extra large one. It actually increases your beaver tail um, right there. And then right here is a small one and installed as medium. The thing I like about this, um, you know, Glocks come with back straps, but I've never liked the way that Glock back straps work. I mean, the way Glock back straps work is the way that the gun comes with no back straps is the smallest you can make the grip and you can only make the grip bigger. But with this one, because you have a small and the whole back panel slides off, you can actually make your grip smaller. And for me, the sizing of the grip is very important when it comes to determining accuracy and how well I shoot a gun. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm just wanting to get my first impressions kind of on camera so that when we actually do shoot it, I can know whether or not I'm actually correct in my assumptions has really good aggressive texturing. I've been dry firing the crap out of this. I just have not had a chance to hit the range. I do love the fact that they add accelerator cuts with the same texturing as on the grip. Um, you have really good aggressive texturing on the front strap and you have a little, these checkers under here and on the front and then your trigger guard is also kind of cut off at the front. So some people like to put their hand around the gun like this, some people like this and I prefer it like this. The undercut right here is very, very high, and it's also beveled off quite nicely, so you won't get what they call Glock knuckle, um, which a lot of people actually get. To explain Glock knuckle, this is a Glock, and you can see right here, although it is you know fairly smooth, um, right here, these edges are quite harsh, and over time, that will dig into your knuckle right there, and you can actually see that my knuckle here, it kind of bows out because of the callus. So if you compare my middle fingers of this is my left hand, my right hand, my right hand, it, it's just got a big callus on it from shooting a lot of Glocks or other types of guns that cause that callus. Another thing that's in the box is this really cool little cleaning kit. And I, I thought that this was quite fascinating. I've never quite seen a cleaning kit like this that came with the gun, but you basically got these rod systems here. And they simply, you know, screw together 
just like so. And then they screw into this thing and this becomes your handle. And then it comes with four different attachments. So you have a brass bristle brush, uh, you have a soft brush, you have a plastic bristle brush, and then you have a loop here. So you can put a patch on here and then you just screw those to the end of this and that's how you can clean your barrel. I, I guess the cool thing is, I mean, this isn't anything new, but most guns don't come with anything that's quite this nice, but it all fits in there nicely. So that, that's kind of cool. If that's something you wanna kind of throw in your range bag, to maybe try to find a barrel obstruction or something and try to get it out at the range, that might work. But a lot of guns, like this one for example, this is what came with my CZ. And to kind of give you just a little bit of a spoiler for you know a future video, I just picked up a Shadow 2. And this is you know $1,500 gun, and that's the kind of cleaning kit it came with. And then this little guy came with something pretty ingenious. So this will be in a future video. So these right here are our different adapter plates for different optics. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a modular optics handgun. Now you're gonna hear a lot of terminology regarding optics handguns. And, and the reason I bring that up is there is a big difference between optics ready and modular optics. Let me give you an example. For example, this is my Sig Sauer X5 Legion that I built with an 80% module. If you guys are interested in watching that video series, I will be sure to put that link down in the description. But this one is 100% optics ready. However, it is only made to fit one type of optic footprint, which is the Romeo. And I've tried getting other optics plates to try to fit different types of optics, and I just haven't had much luck with it. And so, there are tons of pistols out there that are called quote unquote optics ready, but they're only able to accept one or two types of optics. Another example would be the Springfield Hellcat is only set up to accept the Shield Sights RMS. And I do believe if you modify it, you might be able to fit the 507K on there, but that's just something to keep in mind. So the main competitors, I guess in regards to modular optics would be like the CZ, P10, um, C, F, and S that are modular optics, the MMP cores that are modular optics, the Glock MOSs, you know, and they got MOSs now, even with the Glock 48, all that in the 43X, which is awesome. And you know, there's other guns. I'm not gonna list them all. That's just way too many guns to list. That's who this gun is competing with. And of those guns, very few of them are as affordable as this one. Which is actually a really good segue. Let's talk about pricing of the A-Rex Delta. For the most part, it, it, it kind of depends which ones you get. I believe the most expensive one that I've seen, um, and I'm not I'm not going to go over MSRP. I'm going to go over what they're actually selling for. Um, is about five hundred and thirty five dollars if you get the Optics Ready L version, which is like their Glock seventeen. If you go back down to like the X version or their nineteen X, it goes down to about five hundred twenty five dollars. And then, the, and if you go down to this, this version here is about five hundred and fifteen dollars. And then, if you get this as like a non optics ready, um, they're a little bit less. Like for example, this one's five fifteen for the optics ready. But if you go non optics ready, it's only four ninety. And to me, you might as well just get it as optics ready. Now, the good news is, you don't got to pay that much money for this. I got this from BDU. Um, I've, I've talked about them in past videos. I'll have a link at the build list if you wanna if you wanna go check out these prices. For example, the Delta X is four hundred and twenty three dollars. They have all the colors, and most of them are in stock, as at least right now. I mean, maybe they'll go out of stock after this video. I don't know. They got all kinds of different ones. Some are four hundred twenty three dollars. Some of them are four fifty. But the most expensive one is four fifty. But they got the L, the M, and the X, and they got them optics ready as well as non optics ready. Like for example, if you wanted this as a non-optics gun, it's like 389. But I was taking a look at these plates and you know, a couple of concerns I do have about these plates is they are made of plastic. You get all these different ones and on the back it says type one, it says type two, and then right here we have type three, we have type four, and then we have type five, and then you get all this different hardware here and essentially what we'll do, and I'll, I'll go over this when we actually do the review, is you pull this plate off you mount one of these to it, and then you mount your optic to this plate. So I am a little bit concerned on how well a plastic plate will work. I've never used one. Maybe they know something that I don't. But if you have had experience with this, I'd love to hear what your experiences are like down in the comments section, because I really don't know what to think at this point 
regarding plastic plates, but that's essentially the way a modular optic system works. Now, I was going through the owner's manual and I was, you know, it's a very well laid out owner's manual. It's got everything you need to know and nothing you don't. So optics ready platform is on page 42. So right here, specific optics ready interface plates. So it tells you on the type one, Burris Fast Fire, Vortex, Viper, Venom, um, Leica, Tempest, um, something called Doctor. Type two will fit your Trigicon RMR and SRO. The type three will fit the Leopold Delta Point Pro. The type four plate will fit the Vortex Razor. Uh, Seymour, never heard of that one. And then type five will fit the Shield Sights RMS or J Point R MRD. And I'm assuming that the type five plate will fit the 507K um, from Holosun and maybe the RMR CC. But like I said, I'm working on getting some of those so that we can actually test them on the channel, but I'd be excited to see that. So yeah, this should actually work for the uh, Holosun, but we'll see. I do have a Holosun inbound. I'm working on getting an RMR CC as well. And so that will definitely be in the future video. Over here, we have a couple of Allen wrenches and then we have a couple of other types of screws. And I'm assuming these screws are for actually mounting optics to the plate, whereas the screws that are in this bag are for securing the plate to the slide. Now, something that has surprised me about this trigger is the pull weight. The pull weight is kind of high, but when you're actually pulling it, it doesn't feel as high as it's reading. Let me show you. I do have to kind of hold this gauge still I'm not gonna help the trigger, but it wobbles. I need to get a new gauge, I just never do. But I'm gonna put it towards the bottom of the trigger shoe. That's where I like to pull my triggers from. And let's see where it reads. So that one read at six and a quarter pounds. Let's try another one. Keep things fair. Let's put a mag in it and a dummy round. Let's see if that makes a difference. Sometimes having a mag in your gun will change it. Dang, that was seven pounds. That didn't feel right, let me see. Ah, uh, I think that one was dragging on the table. Okay. That one was about six and a half pounds. Now, what confuses me about this is I did a review on the Lone Wolf on their, their complete pistol that's very similar to a Glock about a month or so ago. And in that review, um, I was talking about how atrocious the trigger was and that it pulled stupid heavy at like six and a half pounds. Strangely enough, with that one, I couldn't press out and pull the trigger without disrupting the sights. With this one, on the other hand, I can get, I can actually come from indexing point down to the trigger and pull the trigger without disrupting the front sights. That's something that's very important to me when I'm testing a pistol that I, like say I'm at the gun store and I can't actually test it before I buy it. I like to point it at the wall and pull that trigger and see how well I can not disrupt that front sight. And this one, given even though the trigger is very heavy, I am very good with it. I think in the future, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna take this uh, guy apart and we are going to polish the trigger. See if we can't make it a little bit lighter. I'm gonna look at it and I'm really hoping that the aftermarket picks up on this guy because I really think if the aftermarket picks up on it, this thing is gonna be a force to be reckoned with. So disassembling this is very similar to the Glock 19 or Glocks in general, and it's very similar to the CZ P10, but there is a little bit of a difference. So if you're in the cocked position, obviously you wanna check it, make sure you're empty, point it in the safe direction, pull the trigger. Then you're gonna pull back slightly back here and you're gonna pull down up here at the same time and let go. Interesting thing about this is with all other guns, you'd simply take the slide and push it all the way off. This one lifts straight up. It's kind of strange. And you know, looking inside of it here, um, obviously this is the slide. Um, you get your recoil spring and your barrel and then your firing pin and all that. But in here is very strange. I find it, to be very similar to Glock and Smith & Wesson M&P internal. So like kind of like up here, it reminds me of a Glock, uh, very much so. And then moving back here, it very much reminds me of a Smith & Wesson M&P. It's almost like they took the best of both worlds. I mean, I guess that'll be determined, but that's kind of what it feels like. And then to put it back together, you simply just place this down 
straight and then pull it back and it's on. I thought that was really strange. I've never seen a slide that doesn't slide straight off the front. So I will say this, you know, one of the first impressions that I get, you know, out of the box is it feels smaller than it actually is, which is really strange because, you know, I, t I talked about earlier, you know, with all the different competitors for optics, but its main competitors are like things like the Glock 19 or the MMP 2.0 Compact, we'll scoot these over, or even the CZ P10C, which this one has a comp, but just ignore the compensator. Um, but what's really strange about this is, you know, this size of handgun has always been the perfect handgun for me. It's not too large, it's not too small. It's just always worked great for having fun at the range as well as I can conceal carry them. What's fascinating about this though, is it feels smaller than all of these but if we actually stack it up here, it's actually about the same size. Um, so here we got the back straps kind of even with the MMP 2.0. Um, they are pretty much equal. If we get the tops of them aligned, I mean, obviously I got a mag in it. We could take the mag out. And so with the mag out, you can see it is a little bit shorter, but then again, I have a mag well on here. So uh, that mag well does add a little bit of length, but even so it's still, a little bit shorter. Um, comparing it to the Glock 19, again, the length of the slides are about identical. Um, and then the trigger guards, the openings are about the same, which is kind of crazy. And then the length of it is about equal um, uh, in regards to from the top of the slide to the grip, they are about equal. Then if we compare it right here to the CZ P10C, um, we can see, we're not looking at the compensator, but the CZ P10C is a tad bit longer. And then if we get the tops of these slides, it's barely longer in the grip on the P10C, but very interesting. Now where you are gonna see the biggest difference is in the thickness. So the best place to look at the thickness is back here at the rear. Um, you can see where how much wider this one is than this. The same thing here, the Glock is a little bit wider. Right here, the M&P is quite a bit wider. Another thing I'm starting to notice here is the bore axis. So on the Glock, you know, the bore axis is essentially at the center of this barrel, which is about right here. Well, this dovetail tang right here is so much thinner that I feel like the, the bore axis is probably close to the same as the Glock. And then here on the M&P, you know, it's a lot thicker right here. So, you know, the bore axis it, it is not quite as thin as I'd like it, but it is quite high. And then right here on the M&P, you know, you got a pretty decent bore axis as well. So the bore axis is, I'm not gonna measure them because I, I don't really have all the tools to do that, but they seem relatively close. Something that kind of has me thrown off is the thinness of the, of the slide. Right here on the left, I have a Glock 43, and on the right, we have the A-Rex. And you can see that it's not quite as thin as the Glock 43X, but it is a lot thinner than the Glock 19 and all those other things. So there we go on the MMP 2.0 shield. I mean, these thicknesses look a lot closer than the Glock 43 in my humble opinion. So now let's jump up top real quick. I wanna talk about a couple other things. I wanna talk about some potential changes that I might like to see for this. I also wanna go over holster fitment. I, that's always a big deal. So, you know, I wanna see if it'll fit any of my existing holsters. That way, you know, if you have existing holsters, you don't gotta go out and buy a new one just for this gun. And then we'll go over my final first impressions. Back up top. So kind of going back to what I was talking about at the, at the beginning of this video today, because this is at the price point that it's at, and because it's actually modular optics and not just optics ready, and because it has a really good grip, because it has a really decent trigger pull, because it has a lot of this versatility, I think that this could be the GTR of the gun world. Yeah, there's other companies that are offering things like with the Taurus, right? That has the optics ready, the Taurus G3 Toro. But I don't know, I'm just not a fan. I mean, I'm not against it, it's just not for me. That's the only other gun that's actually similarly priced to this one. And so what this is gonna do, depending on how the how you know people respond to this or if a bu bunch of people buy it or not, I mean, for the price, dude, I mean, I think this one was $422, like I was, I was talking about earlier. 
Now, granted, we gotta go shoot it, which is why we're making today's video to you know compare and contrast first impressions versus actual impressions. Um, but if this thing can perform anything like I'm anticipating that it will, this could very seriously become probably my most favorite polymer handgun. Now, I'm not saying that it will, I'm just saying if it performs the way that I want. A couple things that I, I do worry about, you know, going to the range that we might have issues with is I haven't watched very many videos on this. I've only watched one or two. Some people complained about the mag release not working, but so far mine's okay. Some people talked about, you know, when you hit the slide lock, slide release, um, the chamber of rounds, sometimes it wouldn't go into battery. With at least the dummy rounds, that seems to be okay, but that doesn't tell me anything. Um, some people have said it's a bit snappy, but, uh, and if it is, I, I wanna see how it compares to like, you know, my other guns. Now let's talk about some gripes that I do have with this right now. At the current moment, there are no suppressor height sights made for the A-Rex Delta. Now, I went and looked, I was trying to find some because, you know, whenever I put a red dot on a gun, I like to have suppressor height sights. So if my red dot goes out, I can still co-witness and look through the glass, but use my irons. And with this one, there's none available, but um, I did find some night sights for it. So, you know, that's kind of cool if you want night sights. I'll have a link over at the build list if you want to check those out. I'm not worried about night sights, um, but I did do some research. I found a gentleman on Reddit who said that he found some Ameriglows that work. Um, they were kind of hard to find in stock, so I will have a link for those at the build list. I did order a set. I'm just waiting for them to arrive. They did say that the Ameriglows that are made for the Springfield XD, I believe it is, or XDM something, um, they work, but it was only a, a particular size. So like I said, I'll, I'll have the link for you, but he was able to co-witness with his Holo Sun 507C. Um, I've also ordered um, a couple of 507Ks um, to test with different guns, and we're gonna be testing a couple of different optics with this just to see you know, what works and what doesn't. So I'm very excited to get the testing done. Now, here's the thing. If the aftermarket will support this, so if you're watching this video and you like to make aftermarket parts, maybe you like to make triggers, maybe you like to make uh, mag releases or sights, the only thing that this thing needs is a better trigger. And, and if yours has a mag release problem, you know, you maybe that somebody could come out with an extended mag release. Some people have said that this mag release is too small or it isn't, but for my hand, it's working just fine. I think seeing the aftermarket, you know, start to create triggers, actually create a, you know, proper suppressor height sights, um, create some barrels, um, you know, maybe some mag wells, stuff like that. I really think that this could, this gun could be the GTR of the gun world because it's so affordable, but it comes with all the features, if not more features than like the Glock MOS or the MMP 2.0 core or other modular optics handguns. So, but now let's talk about holsters and you know, what works with it and what doesn't work with it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, you know, whenever I get a new gun, especially if I want to carry it, sometimes I don't want to wait on a holster. Sometimes I like to see if some of my existing holsters will work with it. And so let's test that out. All right. So this is my very first appendix carry holster that I ever had. This was the one that actually finally made me like appendix carry. It was designed for just a Glock 19 with a red dot with this mag carrier. Put that in. Okay, we're good there. Now let's test the magazine. Okay, so the magazine side is quite loose. And on this one, you can't adjust the retention of the magazine. So that's kind of a bummer. But the good news is the gun fits great. Now for my other holsters that I typically carry, I always use a light bearing holster. And with this one, I have the APLC. No, they're not making these lights anymore. So I can't give you a link or anywhere to pick them up. But a lot of my holsters are designed after these lights. I know they're currently designing a new replacement for the APLC3 called like the Wild One, I believe, but it's not out yet. So this is my current EDC setup. It's a tier one concealed holster, spare mag with a plus five or plus four mag extension. Glock 19X that was customized. I have a whole video on this setup. Um, okay, cool. So with this one, the retention is a little bit loose, but we can tighten it up, you know, with a screwdriver here. Um, but it does seem to fit quite nicely. Let's see, fits beautifully. It does have perfect relief if you did have a red dot on it, so that's good. And then on the mag side, let's see. Okay, so the mag, still a little bit loose, but with this one, I can tighten it down. All right, got it tightened down. We're good to go. 
Okay, so a Glock 19 holster, especially these ones from tier one, this is the Axis, and then I think this is the Axis Slim. And then, uh, so it works great. Um, you do have to tighten it down, obviously, to get it to fit this because this is a little bit thinner than the Glock 19. Now, I wanted to try one other holster. This holster was actually for my CZ P10C. This is also from tier one. This one's called the Agus, not Axis, but Agus. It's carbon fiber and red, um, but it, it's also made for the APLC. Okay, don't even need to tighten that one. And then the magazine. Okay, so the cool thing about this one, uh, the magazines actually fit better without having to adjust it. But let's see how this thing conceals on our body uh, just to see what's happening. All right, so I'm gonna put a mag in it and see how it does. All right, conceals like a dream. Absolutely amazing. Pull it, draw it, present. So there you go, conceals like a dream. Final first impressions. There's not a whole lot that I wanna change, at least yet, until I, you know, we'll see if that changes after I shoot it. But as of right now, it's got the perfect texture. The texture's not too rough. The magazine release, you know, at least dry firing doesn't feel as bad as some people have said, but you know, we'll see when we actually go shoot it. Um, it feels super comfortable to, I feel like I can really get my mitts around it and really hopefully mitigate some recoil. I love that it has the textured accelerator cuts. No other guns are really coming with that. Um, there might be one or two, but most of them aren't. And I like the fact that it has the modular optics. Um, you know, the chamber indicator I can do with or without those. But I feel like the, the only thing that I wanna change about this gun is I wanna figure out how to make the trigger just a little bit better. I mean, the trigger's not bad right now, but it could be better. I mean, the main thing is when I get a gun, um, I'm looking to see, can I pull the trigger without disrupting the sights? And in this case, I can, but it just needs to be smoothed out just a little bit. Um, so if somebody starts, so if we can get some people to come out with maybe an aftermarket trigger for this, maybe an aftermarket magazine release, and maybe a magwell, I really think there wouldn't be much left to do to this gun. I mean, but I could be wrong because I still got to go shoot it. So uh, let me know what your predictions are down in the comments section.